Jehovah was bringing out, all right? So now, the thing that we got to do is keep the commandments. So we're going to get into some easy commandments that you can do. Because I'm going to ask you, Daisy, what are some of God's commandments? Because in our communities, we don't learn God's commandments. The main thing that we do in our communities is we break God's commandments. A lot of us, we do it ignorantly. But some of us do it willingly. So what we're gonna, we want to determine today is whether you love God or not. Are you going to keep God's commandments or are you going to break God's commandments? So we're going to point out some very simple, easy commandments that you can do. And you're not, you're not doing it for us. We not like I said in the beginning. We don't we don't have a collection plate. We're not we can't follow you around with cameras and a microscope. Up. This is for you if you truly love God. So we're gonna jump into an easy thing is the dress code, right? Do you think God has a dress code? We're gonna see, right? We're gonna go to First Timothy two and verse nine. And what we're reading is out of the Bible. Like you you work a job. I heard somebody bring this out exactly, right? They, they said, when you go to work every day, right, don't, don't, you, well, where do you work at? If you mind me asking, what type of job is it? You ain't got to, security. security. If you walk into the, to the, uh, uh, to, to your security job, dress like how you are right now, what would they tell you? They'd be like, yo, Daisy, yo, you need to go home and change, right? It's the same deal with God. God has a dress code, a uniform for the Israelites to wear, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to explain it to you. So we're going to go into the book of First Timothy, chapter 2, and we're going to read from verse 9 on down. All right, you listening? Yeah. All right, here we go. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. It says that women are supposed to wear modest apparel. Modest clothing, right? What does it mean to have modest clothing? What does that mean? It means to cover yourself up. It means not to reveal yourself in a sexual manner. But when you look in America, the Bible calls Babylon the Great, all you see is, is, is sexual sin going oh, rampant around here, right? Or right now, the apparel that you're wearing right now, would you say that's covered up? Or are you kind of showing it? What would you say? It's hot? No, no, we're not, we're not talking about the weather, because look, come a little closer, Daisy. I want to show you something on this sign. We got visuals for you. You see this sign right here at the bottom? Our women are picking cotton. And it, it was very hot when they picked the cotton. You get 110 degrees, 100 degrees in the 90s, right? And that's labor and strenuous activity. Would you not agree? No. Right? So our women, they wore dresses during those times. So we're asking you, your clothing that you have on right now, is it covered up? You got some skin showing? What's happening with that? What's going on? What would you say? And when, I'm not trying to make you feel bad in no type of way. All we're doing is bringing out the sense of the Bible of what God wants us to do. Because at the end of the day, who do you want to serve? Do you want to serve God? Or you want to serve yourself? Or do you want to serve the devil? What do you want to do? You want to serve yourself and God? So we're going to see how do we serve God by keeping his commandments, right? So back to your clothing. Would you say that's covered up? Is that modest apparel or is it not? Let's be, honest, let's be real with one another. It's not, my sister. It's not. You know that, right? So let's read it again. First Timothy 2 and 9. The book of First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Keep reading with shamefacedness and with sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls of costly array. Because at, at the end of the day, a lot of our women are dressed in modest, in modest right? And the, and the penalty that a lot of us pay is broken relationships. Because what type of man are you going to attract dressed like that? Huh? You don't like men? All right, so now we're going to hit another. So that's something that you got to do, right? You got to dress modest, right? But now we got to go to uh, 1 Timothy 5 and verse 14. Because when you're in the midst of sodomy, homosexuality, that's actually a sin also, right? Let's see. 1 Timothy, what is it? 5 and verse 14. 
The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. So our women, they got to be married to who? To men. Right? So if you don't like if you don't like men, oh, we're going to read the Bible. Go to uh 2 Ezra 7 and go to verse 26. Because we're, we're reading the laws of God. Being in the be, being in the midst of sin, homosexuality is a sin. And we're not going against you. We're not tearing you down. Hey, hey, deal, deal yeah. with me, sis. Yeah. Deal with me. Not but, the t cameraman. Deal with me. Yeah, but, deal with me. Deal with me. Because you're running off, and I'm not trying to play you in no type of way. Go. I'm showing you love right now, right? Bring out the law. Bring out the law of Leviticus. Quickly. Go to Leviticus 18. Because a lot of our people are in the midst of these activities, these these sins. The Bible don't call it homo, uh, yeah, homosexual. The Bible, yeah. what it calls yeah. it is sodomy. And that's a sin. Can, men can laying down with men, women laying down with women. Can the book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22. Verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. That's an abominable thing, right? Because when we go to Romans 1, our women should not be laying down with women. And Daisy, we're not bringing this out out of no type of hatred. All we're doing is bringing the laws of God so our women can do what? Can be married to men. So we can do what? Rebuild our nation. As soon as the laws of God come out, a lot of times a lot of our people want to run away. But you're still going to be in the midst of sin. That's not going to... Running away is not going to drive the sin away. What's going to stop the sin is when we repent. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Hey, bro, 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 with the broom backpack. Right? So what? Read it again. Who did what? What did they do? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The truth of God is that the younger woman do what? Get raised up to, to, to marry men. Not to be laying down with women. Not, two women should not be in the bed laid down together. Right? The truth of God is that we got to keep God's commandments. The truth of God is that we're the Israelites. But the question is, who changed the truth of God into a lie? Because two women laying down together, that's not going to rebuild our nation. You see, we are a destroyed and broken people. You see that we need to rebuild our nations, but two women can't bring forth a child, right? Keep reading. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Because who taught us that? We learned that in where? In slavery. And my sister with the stroller, we learned these things in slavery. Two women laying down together. Two men laying down with one another. And we not hating on nobody. All we're trying to do is rebuild our nation. So who turned the truth of God into a lie? That we're, we're walking around as wild beasts, right? Keep reading. Who, who serve the creature more than the creator? who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. You heard that, my sister? Hey, come here, I gotta, I gotta ask you a question real quick. Come here with the stroller. I gotta ask you something. Come, 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 come. We bringing it out. We bringing out the laws of God. So what we just, what we just emphasize is what, the, what you call homosexuality, the Bible calls sodomy. And God is against that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.